new for 96 with your hosts Kevin McCauley and Chris Wynn. Did you know that um, our group chat, uh, every single person is a, their avatar is a character from Frasier. Like, on mine, Blake is the, the crusty chair. On mine, he's the dog. <laughs> that fits. Is, is this recording? Yes. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> and I love, I love Blake Seabrog. I miss him very dearly. Yeah. We'll have him on the show one of these years. Yeah. yeah. Were you going to, were you guys going to talk about me and then do a fake intro? Like I'm not here. Oh, uh, I forgot. I was going to do gonna, that. We're, Wait, yeah, we're still we are recording. That, go back like, down into the cellar. <laughs> sounds <Yeah>. good. <laughs> and then come back up. Yeah, I was going to, I'm like, I don't know if I should fully on the table or not. <laughs> well, that's up to you. Mm-hmm. You let your personality shine as it should. Yeah, Anyways. Thank you. Well. Yes. I guess that's ruined. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we can't do that now. Let's keep that ball rolling. Um, yeah. Hi, Kevin. Hello, Christopher. Um... Welcome to another episode of New, New for 96. 96. Did we keep it within the scale there? I think we did. We're okay. trying to like, <laughs> before the show started, I told Kevin that every time we say New for 96 together, we like shout it and like it just goes off the charts and it sounds way to, terrible. Way to break the 96th wall here. I know. And Ooh. what I've been doing is I've been splicing like from episode three, <laughs> each and every single episode. So it's the same. I mean, every episode has just been episode three, but no one's noticed because no one listens. No one. No. Not Definitely not me. Um, can I introduce our guest? We have a guest. Yes. He is a host of the DFL Show podcast, a Hooniverse contributor, a opinionated person Uh and most importantly, he was born... In 96, so he is technically new for 96. I didn't know this. Yeah, oh this, is, this is huge. This, this is a first. Massive. This is Very a large. NF96 first. Big deal. Yep. Okay. I had no idea. Yes. Yeah. Welcome to the show. This Welcome, is... Patrick Hofstetter. Yeah, this is, is that like... pronounced right? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, you guys got me through the last couple weeks of working in an office. <laughs> How was that? <laughs> He uh, was also he quit and killed himself <laughs> after yeah. hearing us. Oh, yeah. excellent, amazing! I got better. Oh, I got better. Oh, okay. you won't, yeah. kids. Are you so still? Don't. Are you still in that job? Yeah, but I'm moving out of office. Oh, so okay. So I'm moving to an IC position for a couple months. Oh, that's fantastic. It is because that means I don't have to work in an open plan office anymore, and you don't have to listen to us. No, that's I mean the I best still part. will because it's okay, masochist or whatever. Yeah. But like, you're, you're already on the show. You don't have to say nice things now. No, uh, yeah, exactly. You've made Not the it. opposite of how that works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, you, we let you on. Now you can just, you know. You talk shit loose. in person? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Understood. Mm-hmm. No, it's, it is good to be here. It is good to be uh, new for 96 as I was brand new for 96. Yeah. Born and in February, so it was the 96 model year still. Not our 97. first 96 no, model. No, not 97. Good, mm-hmm. no. good clarification. F97. Yeah. That's terrible. I yes. feel like they were selling... 2019s at the end of 2017. Was I crazy? Mm, when was the first GT2 was it, delivered? Was it Truck Month? Am I oh, it was, it, wait, it was it a December to month. remember? Truck month it was a de- hey, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Okay. Well, you're just ruining all sorts of surprises now, aren't you? I don't. I don't we, actually know what you just showed me. Yeah. Well, you. It's okay. He doesn't know. It's okay. No we'll one knows. It. This is like your private enjoyment. It really is. Oh, is this a? We review brochures on the show. You listen to this show? No, before? I do. But I, I, <laughs> it doesn't look like a brochure, Kevin. It's because it's a hardcover book. What does it yeah. say? We're going to get to that later. Don't answer that. Um, anyway, uh, so you are a motorsport commentator of all things racing. And, sure. Commentator. Uh, that's not accurate. Analyst. Professional. Pundit, I feel, is Ooh, maybe more appropriate. I like that. Yeah. That's good. Because I feel like journalism is. Far too strong because the one scoop that I actually had before anyone else, I didn't think was real, so I never published it. No. Oh. I had a friend at Red Bull who knew about the Verstappen uh, Kvyat switch in 2016 before it happened. I did not publish it because I'm like, there's no way they would swap drivers in the middle of a season. He's still a teenager. And then My they God. did. They did. And then he won that race. And it would have been an amazing, beautiful scoop that I just... 
Yeah. Why did I say that like Donald Trump would have said it? Mm. It's a beautiful, amazing. Nope. Yep. Yeah. Did I send you the screenshots of? You did that because it was a. It was actually a very clever reference to orange. Which is the new black. Yeah. Well, no, Verstappen and all his fans, they wear orange for the Dutch. Oh, so yeah. So by, yeah. by speaking in that pastiche of a voice, it's kind of like, a, oh, this is a reference to the Dutch oh, yeah. national pride for yep. Verstappen, which is overwhelming and unbearable, much like uh, it's, the it's, other one. It's mainly white nationalism, if you really think about it. it yeah, you really don't have to scratch the surface that deep to nope. get there. It's wow. like the opposite of an onion. Mm-hmm. It's just all on the surface. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All text, no subtext. So you Very wanted white. to talk about 993s. You were banging on our door of the studio. I don't... Yeah. Talking about 993s. Yeah, what about them? They're good. They're bad and they're ugly. Mm. They look like a Volkswagen kit car version okay. of, an, of a 911. Here's my take on this. Spicy. Uh, it, they're very spicy. Uh, I'm looking for an air-cooled, and mm-hmm. it might be a 993, but not because I think they're the best looking. Um, and I don't even think that, like, if you're going to get an old Porsche, Porsche, uh, that the 993 is old enough. It's almost modern. Um, but It's closer to a 996 than, you know, like... Yeah, it's air-cooled. Hood. It's air-cooled, for sure. Uh, but, so, my but dilemma... interior pieces and everything. Yeah. Like, it's very... It feels very late 90s. It does. It feels very late 90s. And it's, it's like, it's solid, and it probably feels heavier than, like, a 964 and everything, like, older than that. Uh, but, so... But it's also kind of like a nice middle place between like having a vintage Porsche and um, a modern one. And so, because I thought like I would get an older car, maybe a 911 SC, and then yeah. like down the road, maybe pick up like a 997 or something. But if I got a 993, I think that would kind of satisfy both ends of that need, desire. Here's another thing. Yeah. You're... You're describing all of the things that are actually problems with owning 993s. What is that? They are the mix of modern and old, so they didn't make a lot of them, so the parts are astronomically expensive, even parts for 911. Are, that parts. would be for every single yeah, one that's of all them. them. <laughs> Not There's a 996, more. buddy. There's, oh, come on. I know, that's, I mean, we're talking... The perfect cool. specimen. <sighs> We no, I'm kidding. The 997 is good. The 997 is really good, but 996s will always have a special place in my heart. Mm-hmm. And They're not as bad as people say. Like, you know, people keep talking annoyingly in the comments like the 996 is going to have its day, and its day is kind of coming a little bit through bat. Yeah. Like, did any of you guys see like the low mileage 996s sell for like 30 plus? Uh, like it, but they're they're pre facelift. Oh, I'm waiting for you to go pre LCI. That's oh. the one. Yeah. Um, <sighs> hold on, real quick. Yep. We Do you need us to refresh you, Patrick? On we're drinking sherry right now, so we're gonna take a shot of sherry every single time. Yeah. Well, it's I thought you were going power, to say. By the way. Uh, I thought you were gonna say IMS failure, and that's why I took the. I was oh, prepared yeah, to no, take no. the drink. Yeah. I I have my own drinking game prepared in my head for this. Okay. Because again, I was a great employee. See. He's Great a fan. Point. He's a fan. When I was editing people in the middle of nowhere, their opinions on their visit to the Texas Roadhouse, which I did for money yeah. for a couple of weeks. There's peanuts on the floor. Hey, we're actually not allowed to ding them for the peanuts on the floor. That's part of the experience. Wow. Oh, wow. That's Again, astonishing. I hate to break this to them. They have peanuts. Everywhere. The 993 is the Texas Roadhouse of 911s. <sighs> Think about it. No, Think about too it. hot a take. Um, that's what that's what I'm here for. No, Patty hot no. takes. It's it's <laughs> good. You know, nine nine threes are good. They're not my favorite, but I don't hate them. Uh, the nine six four is right there, and the nine six four is nine six fours are fine, except that it's almost too much of like you know when you see like morphs, um, like animorphs. No, like okay. just morphs, like animated. You see that animorph for the cat that looked like Adam Driver. Okay, it was funny. <laughs> well, we'll go there. Yeah, okay. Soon. Okay, okay. we'll go to the okay. next topic. <laughs> okay. Uh, but to me, it's kind of like the nine six four, which actually I do like certain versions. Like controversially, I really like the nine six four America. Um, the America RS Roadster. America. RS America. You said America. Um, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I think like s- there are certain variations the nine six four look good that look good, but I. For the most part, though, and I think 
Kevin, you kind of like brought me to this conclusion that it looks like a mid morph nine eleven. I never like, said that. It's like a G model. This is my own like description. Um, <laughs> oh god. Shit. Kevin's brought up something on his phone. It's fine. It's Pornography, fine. really? You can't wait. Safe search. Uh, Off, buddy. It's I after guess. nine p.m. All right. Um, yeah. So the nine six four. I don't know. Plus, like nine six fours are uh, said to be much more troublesome. Let to me give you a own. An own. Yes. Let me give you an yeah. own. I wasn't going to say that, but let me give you uh, a qualified opinion. Yes. About all of the above. So the 993 is very pretty in that it is no. rounded um. and integrated and cle- cleanly executed. My problem is ever since I realized that the hood is much higher. Mm-hmm. Oh, that one day at yeah, I don't know. our friend's shop where yeah. yeah, you realize that like there's so much trunk room because the hood is much higher. The hood is higher. Like the, the very low hood on all earlier 911s is very appealing. Like the reason... You always think of the the headlights being so much more upright on an earlier car, and those those tunnels of the headlights on the fenders are so much more pronounced. We're looking at a one eighteen scale diecast here. This, those fenders are so much more pronounced, and you always think of it. And the nine nine three, it's much more rounded. It's like oh, it's much more rakish. The headlights are swept back. It's actually the hood line is just much higher. Right. Yeah. And it's more blunt of a front end. Okay. Not as appealing to me. Not a deal breaker. But let me tell you about why the nine sixty four is bad to me. Yeah. They all look too narrow. Yeah. They all look way too narrow. It's because the bumpers are so long. The bumpers are so long, and they look so narrow. And if you see like a non wide body, which the nine six four has like the least amount of wide body variations. Right. Uh, it just that doesn't can be fixed. look. Oh, come on, it doesn't look as good. It's just I don't know. It does look like bumpers, bumper covers added over the impact bumpers. I just think Nate out. would disagree. His he replaced all the bumpers on his car. All yeah, many of all the of panels, his bumpers are different because panels, it's an RWB and it's right. a wide body. Yeah, he fixed all the things I have issues with. Yeah, he would agree perfectly. Yeah, no, um, the nine nine three. I think the worst color for it is white. And I was looking at that white one. And the issue I had with it was that all of the cut lines were visible now. And, like, the face doesn't work for me. Like, all the, the headlights panels. headlights are bad. The no, the headlights are, are good. The headlights are good. They look like They're what's... They're round... Well, the fender. I mean, and that's the thing is that, like, then uh, if you look at if you look at a 993... Uh, and then you look up in, at a nine nine six. Basically, they just kind of filled in that area between the headlight and the hood, and that formed like the nine nine three and the nine. Or, I'm sorry, nine nine six. Uh, and those actually look really good to those me do. now. So the thing about the nine nine six is one of the one of the cost savings oh, is yeah. integrating all of those light units into a single housing, and it's less connectors because that stuff was still built by hand. You know, the nine nine six was not built by hand in the sense of the 93 was, but a lot of it is still made by hand and it, they could save so much time by yeah. having fewer connectors, fewer things. I mean, it is a yeah. clean, it is like a, like idealistic futurism version of the 911 where everything it is it's like, and it's everything a, plugs into one place. It's a GT1. Like it has GT1 headlights. It does have GT1 well, headlights. headlights. And it looks so good. Um, like th- that's why, like, I think those to me look better than the point twos, 996.2s. And, I think that... Uh, I have an opinion about point two headlights. Okay. Here's the thing. This is the cool thing. I, I always think of the point two as almost being a... It always seems bigger than the earlier one in my head. Yeah. yeah. But it's, you know, it is smaller. Yeah. You know, it always seems like the oval is pulled down longer below, but it's actually they shrunk the part that... The, yeah. They shrunk the non-oval part. And, like, the bumper fascia, like, is different as well from bumper one, at least. And so, like, it, it's a very dramatically different car. It's almost like a completely <clears throat> different... It is a completely different design. Like, it doesn't even retain the... It's an LCI. It's an LCI. Yeah, it is an LCI. Uh, but the first ones are so simple. Like, they are... It's a kind of casual evolution. Uh, pe- most people don't think of it that way because they hate them, but... And it was um, a radical revolution yeah. in every sense. But back to the 993, I think everything else but the 993 looks really good from every other The taillights other are amazing. Taillights are taillights amazing. Are good. The taillights are amazing. And especially in S form when it's like wide body. Oh, but the, I, but so the thing good. is, every 993 looks like a wide body because they all look wide because they are prop... Like, I will it is by this point... They're four feet long. Yeah. And four it, and a half feet wide. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a, a big choke. square. Yeah, what was <laughs> the talking buggy cartoon from the seventies and eighties? Chevron commercials. No, no, no. 
it, it was an it was like a Scooby Doo esque thing. How it's old not do you think we Shark. are? Not oh that old, God. but I saw it on reruns, so I'm I was mm. hoping that anyway. Ooh. They all look like a they look like a cartoon uh, Playmobil dune buggy. That's what 993s look like. To Here's me. the thing that's good about the 993. Just the idea. There's something just romantic about this car that this chassis soldiered on from 1963. And by 1998, it's like, yeah, we have modern gigantic wheels and tires, and the doors are the same width apart as they were in 1963. But now and the fenders are the this entire... far apart because we've done this and all this. And, and what's funny is it's funny for me to think about Porsche in 1998. Not knowing what people loved about the nine on nine eleven, and they and they introduced the nine nine six. Got it all wrong. They, I mean, they did the nine nine six. I'm not saying it's bad, but it's like, oh look, now we have a new chassis, a clean start. We can finally make a car as wide as the track front and rear needs to be, and we don't have to have these silly bulging fenders. It's, it's like no, treat. everyone loved that. Everyone yeah. loved that. Well, they got rid of that. Here, okay. Uh, I'll go on to like the new G wagon because I have opinions about that, but it's. Ooh. Because it's kind of like that a little bit. If they you took the hate classic it, shape. I agree. Yeah, they they took a classic shape. Yeah. Uh, and then they modernized it, but kept it classic still, and just to kind of like appease people. But I think all the characters gone. Like it's no longer that charm that you're driving this 35, 40 year old car anymore that still costs like six figures. Um, but they're the, criminals. Yeah. Yeah, but I think the 996 was that same kind of notion where like. No one asked for it to be better, like necessarily, like in the in the way that the base model was, at least. I mean, like, yeah, but I mean, there is this, there's the constant pull of competition. You've got the right. NSX, you've got the F three fifty five, F three fifty five, the three sixty was coming out. You've got all this stuff. But there's then, the like, pull of, you look at current day, they the, just made a nine nine brand new nine nine three because, and people are going absolutely. I don't. The, you you're know, talking I, about the nine nine seven? No, the new nine nine three. Like. Do you know about the this? One at Pebble? Oh yeah, the Project yeah, yeah. Gold. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So, but I don't really care for that one. Like, I think it's it's neat that they did that, but also it's cheating a little bit. So, like, it's, not it's a one off. It's not in the conversation. It's fine. Uh, yeah, but I mean, just the idea though, like that there was a natural progression, and that you had the same, literally the same roof line. Like it wasn't even the roof line; it was the same roof. It had rain. Yeah. It had rain channels, like actual like. Mm-hmm rain channels that were like designed in the 1960s as like this is efficient um and so that's charming with the 993 because it was designed to be driven with the windows down because it had no ac yeah but that said though like um from an aesthetic standpoint like what the g models really do kind of draw my attention the most i have to say from an interior standpoint though like i'm kind of less inclined um to like that because i sat in that carrera today uh because i went and looked at a car uh, you looked at it I went and looked at it. Oh, yeah. Thanks for looking at my Instagram story. Uh, I was getting preoccupied. Drunk somewhere else. Same. You degenerate. Um, yeah, I went and looked at it. No. So there was a, there's a local one for sale at a dealership. Um, it's, it's overpriced. Uh, it's a Carrera. The, the red Carrera? Yeah. yeah. It didn't seem overpriced. Really? It's a little high. I 993 is also way more expensive than like a 964 or an mm, SC. Not necessarily. 964s. Yes. 964s. Yes. 964s are expensive. Now. Are really expensive. Um, like they're going like on average like just a mid mileage one. 50s? 60s. Really? Honestly, yeah. And can you get? A, can you still get a 360 for 60? Probably. Get I don't know. Modena, That's F1. one of those things that I don't like actually You're like. Probably an F1 Spider, you probably could. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, you can take Spider or you could take F1. Do not take both with the 360. Oh, man. That'd be bad. It'd be super bad. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> be very bad. Very, very bad. I did, like, I did a search a long time ago. I kept a BRZO search for uh, 360s for a little while. Not a sponsor. Not yet. <laughs> um, and. It was surprising how low you could go with them, but then I would click on it and it would be an F1, and then I would notice that it was a spider. And there we have it. Um, so, but yeah, so 993s. They're fine. They're fine. They're, they're kind of like a nice compromise. Like if I'm going to keep a car for a really long time, I think it's going to be, that would, that would make me, I, okay, oh, sorry. We were kind of deviating a little bit. I was saying that I sat in that um, Carrera today, mm-hmm. and maybe it was just the heat and that the car was off and sitting in the sun. 
But I was just sitting there. It was really hot. It was really uncomfortable. Yeah, that's the experience. That's the ownership yep. experience. And like, I'm just like staring at like plastics that I'm, I swear were melting in front of my eyes. And, uh, how sticky was it? It, it wasn't sticky because before they coated everything in stupid, like rubberized, mm-hmm. um, whatever cool. film. Yeah. Um, so I think like I would be happier in the long run with a 993 interior, even though it's basically the same design, but Bigger it's vents. just like, yeah, yeah. The Carrera has pretty big vents. Um, it, except for the oh. first year. Oh, yeah, the yeah, 84 yeah. has this exact same interior as the SC, meaning that Ooh. it also doesn't have, um, it has the same seats and everything. Uh, and then 85, they upgraded the seats. And well, I think else. the sports seats were always an option. Yeah, they weren't even the sports seats. They just had different seats. Like oh, they're, okay. they looked more like nine nine three or even nine nine six seats. Basically, like it's just kind of like this tombstone design. I guess they're all kind of like that. But yeah. Anyways, yeah. Uh, I didn't drive it. I might go drive it tomorrow if really? you want to come. Oh uh, yeah. If you guys want to come take a look. Um. So. Um. But that's where that is. I mean, you do want a guard's red one. I do want a guard's red one. Guard's red. I know it's kind of. An obvious color, but it just looks so good in guards. It's so red. classic. It's a very I, good red. We complain about colors on this about nine elevens. I I like lighter metallics and I like solid colors. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I don't like the kind of like weird wine color red metallics and stuff like that. Like it's not there that it's weird. Colors... If it's weird and bright and poppy, it's cool. What, like, but if it's red... kind of like a downer color, I don't love it. Red wine metallic looks good on long hoods, I think, but it doesn't look good yeah, on yeah. G models. Is, is that the color of Farah's? No. He has um Oh my god. I Cass- saw Cassis Red. Cassis Red, yeah. Cassis. Okay. So and actually I kinda like it. It's a little bit weird and it's one of those colors that changes in light. Um but it's interesting. It's eggplant. What's that RWB here in town that is uh burgundy red? That is the Catalina one, and it yeah. is now in like Arkansas or Alabama. Mm-hmm. Or I know something. it wasn't here anymore, but that was the first one I saw. Mm-hmm. That was the first terrible, terrible JDM car show I worked here uh, when I was in high school. Oh wow! Uh, I was okay. slang and shirts. No way! Slang and JDM. Yeah, shirts. That was a Mayday Garage uh, car. They had an R34 it. parked right next to it. Oh, and was it, it was like did they crush it? Is it crushed by the government now? I think that's the one that is currently involved with that legal dispute in oh, Florida. Oh. I saw a blue R34 on the highway like a few months ago. Very odd. Ooh, I saw the uh, the Houston bogey, as I call it, which is a shitty V6 Challenger next to a shitty V6 Camaro next to a shitty V6 Mustang. Oh. All three lanes, all right next to each other on 45. Hell Trifecta. Yeah. My God. Hell it's the yeah. Houston special. Did you guys see that Cayman? Yeah. And it's been like it's been going round. I love that game. If anything at <laughs> all, nothing like, wrong with that. No, but it does hasten my desire to sell mine. So, um, which he listed. I listed. Ooh, where did you list it? It's just on Craigslist. Okay. I'm just kind of like I'm putting the feeler out. Uh, and I got so my, was that green one. Yeah, yeah. Putting the boat's ears or whatever. Putting the feelers out. Yeah. Putting the feelers Curve out. Feelers. Um, but then I got a, I have a bite. Someone is very interested and might be driving down. Um, but I don't know yet. So I still have to, he lowballed me a little bit, but it's not completely unreasonable. We'll see. Are you so. saying no lowballers? I know what I have. Yeah. That's, the, in fact, I read the, the entire listing. Ad. There's nine paragraphs that say, I know what I have. The guy, because I'm the type of person that when I create a listing, like I will just write um, a novel about the car, uh, but not like a novel, like as in like, like oh, you know, like the mid-engine experience is like. Blah, blah. It's just more like you know all the things that I don't want you to ask me questions, basically. Um, and so he was just like, your ad was very thorough. I have like no questions. Uh, so if you agree to this price, I'll drive down and buy it now. And it's like, what would you say? It's like eighty-five percent of what I'm asking, ninety percent. It's pretty close. It's, it's oh no, actually, it's like ninety. It's, it's like ninety plus 90%. percent. It's yeah. above ninety percent. So the offer is 90, 90 plus percent. So I just have to figure out if like I I want it out of my hair before I get like another car because I cannot deal with four cars again um, unless I get yet another garage. So um, E ninety two. 
E ninety one. E ninety one, right? The good one. I E ninety one. Yeah. Pre LCI. Post LCI. Post LCI. LCI. Uh, and we then prefer to call it facelift when it's BMW, just to be respectful. Yeah. Fine. Uh, we talked about your harassment of Ian McCallum on this show. Ian Callum? Callum, yeah. I'm thinking he, of the actor. You are. He tweeted, he replied to your tweet. He replied to my tweet, but it wasn't good enough. It wasn't, because he didn't get it. Let me overview this. Uh, we are, this is like, all the tangents are happening. It's fine. I want to go back to the uh, the new G-Wagon, too. Oh, okay. oh yeah, we'll do that. No, so the I, the I-Pace should be called, it should be called the E-Pace. The E-Pace. <laughs> it should be called the E Pace. Yes. Ele- the E Pace should be the electric one. The I Pace should not be electric. Yeah, because the I stands for internal combustion engine. It's very ridiculous, and I don't know why they did it. And it's almost like they named one and then realized they were making an electric car a month later, and then they're like, oh, we really boned this. Yeah, Tata was like, shit, shit, shit. Guys, it's, guys, guys. It's just insanity. And so I question Ian Callum on Twitter whenever I can. It's, you know, it's a whole thing. And I, then he you replied. cyber bully him. I rarely get a response. He replied because he was so angry. Like and the ironic thing asshole. is, the most ironic thing is, you. I sent that from a Jaguar dealership because I was there at the Jaguar dealership getting the mini service at the you know oh, same yeah. complex, whatever. Oh. Um, well, let's let's turn back to the G wagon. Fine. Okay. Do we have to? Yeah. We I, should I have it's thoughts. Kind of important. I don't like it. Here's the thing. I, no, I, don't I saw it in person. I yeah. saw it in person. In, it's just kind of... Beach. Okay. To Someone, me, on paper, it just looks like a cartoon version of the icon. Like, um, and I don't know. Like, it's just kind of like they made like a retro-y looking old car. And it's... Why is this better than like an FJ cruiser or a PT cruiser? It's not. Or, it's, it's like a Hummer or, H2. Sorry, not a PT cruiser. It's a Hummer H2 to the H1. It is, it is, no, it no, is no, the PT Cruiser of Mercedes, if we're being honest. Like, yeah, and like, so um, Daniel Golson is currently t- turning into, he's not turning into a skeleton. He's, he's not listening to He's this. arming himself. He um, claims to not listen. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, the new G-Wagon, it just, it's such a caricature. I'm sure it'll sell like hotcakes, um, because now it'll actually be comfortable. Right, um, right. But, like, gone is the magic. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, like, the 996 sold, um, even though... The 996 is the best-selling 911 ever. Yeah, even though, like, it was kind of a caricature of, like, the classics. But now, like, it has a place. Um, and I don't know. Like, it's such a shame. I, I saw, like, I we uh, last weekend, I went and looked at a, um, a two-door G-Wagon. And it was right-hand drive, which Did I you actually had no go to look at it. Or were you having something done on your? No, I went to go pick up the air struts for the Celsius. I thought you were having them put them on. No, I'm gonna keep mine until it fails, and Smart. then okay, I'm gonna have spares plus that one that's lying on the floor over there. It's been there for so long. I know. Well, I was afraid if I put it in my garage that a roach would inhabit it and then mm-hmm. form a family, and then I would have to burn the garage down Fair. with the car. Um, but yeah, so they dropped the price on this one. And so like for an afternoon, I was entertaining the idea, like, what if I just got this thing for fun? Like, I don't know what I would do with it. What purpose it serves, like in my like, um, car interest, but, um, it was kind of an intriguing idea because it was, it, it's really cool. It's a 91, 280 GE, it's the inline six, um, and it has cloth seats, but a slightly like modernized interior. It's like modernized per '90s like Mercedes interior design. Mm-hmm. And it's a three door, and it has the small wheels, and it looks really cool. Like it's just kind of very discreet and neat. Yeah. Um, so it's a G wagon back when they were acceptable, acceptable vehicles, and not a grift put on by a cynical Mercedes board to oh, yeah. steal money from no. the worst they people had a, on earth. They had an AMG version there as well of that era, and it was very bad. Well, I mean, even the last, I mean, the last, even like two years ago, I think it's still cool, and there's something so honest about yeah. it, and it is a grift. But it is honest. a grift. Honest about a Mercedes G wagon. Maybe not the AMG, but it has None side exhaust. No, Patrick. but you it know has what? Side exhaust. They were, they were honest, kind of like the uh, Range Rover Classics were. Like they were supposed to be luxury vehicles, but like at the same time, it's just this truck. It it's just wrapped in leather. It's just so cool because it's like this tin can that they yeah. just get away with selling. And 
the for Rainbow very high Classic money. Two door is so. I mean, if you cool. if you weren't if the price if there was price wasn't a thing, it would be a cool vehicle. Yeah, but here's yeah. the here's the thing is that um, the last gen, I guess at this point now, uh, are there such thing as generations in G wagons? By the way, no, it, it's it's start. <laughs> And then I think the I think now the official gen. generation yeah I think we're officially on a second generation. Yeah. Well, I, no, I think I, I this is I can't substantiate. If they this, share any I, parts, they share the model code. I think like like nine nine. It's like if you had like the nine nine three, and then the next one came out and it was still called nine nine three. Like I think they still named it the same thing. Yeah, just to show the continuity. The thing here's seeing it in person. What I was really struck by was the. So you know on the on the old one, the whole side, you know, from from the grill, you know, all the way to the back, it just seems like this plank of side slab of, of yeah. metal, which is great. The new one, it seems like from the front door to the grill, like to the nose, yeah. it tapers so much because it's like a wide functional modern car in the middle. It's yeah. like and then it just gets it tapers to look like look how look how thin look how narrow this is at the, the front at the grill. Designers are like, it really is like to sneak the H- in a little bit of aerodynamics in this. No, no it's not maybe. it's not aero. It's like to show it's like to make it to like deceive you into thinking there's this narrow vehicle oh. like the G Wagon always was, but it's actually wide at the door. I would think that now they they would want to make it look wider because the uh, four by four, four by, and but the body was always yesterday. narrow. Oh yeah, yeah. there squared. are a lot of them here. There's a yeah. lot of them around here. Of course they are. Yes, because the when the AMG of the G wagon came out, it became the mom mobile of yeah. the yeah. Woodlands, Texas. Wait, uh, yeah. side note though, can I just say like at least yeah. the last of the last gener- last of the last generation? Um, I think early on, like that ninety one that I saw, that was cool that it was not like a to the max version. Uh, yeah, but yeah. I feel like the G500, or I guess it would be the G5... It should be the 500. 500 still? 500, 550. 550. I guess it would be the 550. Because those are the two engine It'd options. It would be the 550, yeah. yeah. Either way, like the non-AMG models, mm-hmm. not as like cool. Like if you're going to get a G... If you're going to get a later model G-Wagon, I feel like you have to get the G63 the or the G65 sauce. because... If you're gonna get like this stupid ridiculous car, you might as well get the most ridiculous version the of it. The side exhaust is so cool. Yeah, the side exhaust it's is cool. So cool. And if it's you want to like, so cool. I love the four x four squared oh. or the. We sat in one at in LA. Did at, we? Steve Ewing had one. Oh, that's right. That's um, right. And it's very large. It's very tall. Yeah. <laughs> like it's so tall. I think the hood. Well, this isn't hard, but the hood yeah. was like. Higher than my head, but it was higher than your head too. Maybe mm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that. I'm I, not sure. I was next to one yesterday, and I th- think actually it might be closer to taller than Kevin than not taller than Kevin. Hmm, uh, maybe it's very it's very large. Um. Anyway, so that's my take. That if you're gonna get a late model G wagon, it has to be like an outrageous one. Otherwise, what's the point? And then if you get an old one, you should just get like a clean, honest, simple one. So, and it, maybe that's the same thing. Uh, no, it just apply. That's my opinion as it applies to G wagons only. The, the end. The people who own modern, like, bought G wagons brand new in like the last decade, they're usually just bad people. This and is true. I think that's why I don't like them. Yeah. Also, yeah, that's they're fair. ugly in a grift. And uh, yeah. making them light up more yeah. and louder. Yeah. No. Like, <laughs> also, they, they sold it. They sold a 65 version for a couple of years. Also, Mercedes yeah. kept doing the thing where like, oh, this is a limited version. And then they, the just sold, then they just sold a billion of them. I, I, this is a tangent. I'm sorry. But I, feel, I could have sworn, this is also a tangent from 19 years ago. The excursion, I feel like they just said it was going out of production to satisfy people. And then they just kept making it for like six more years. Did they? Yes. Can they you did. still get it with the V10? Probably now, yeah, probably. Wait, they don't have an no, excursion. No, they don't anymore. now, but they made it for like five years uh, after yeah. they said they stopped making it. Who actually cared about those? Like, that's, I mean, was well, it? it was, 
it was, you know, just like everyone has to have a target, uh, target, bad example. Everyone has to have like a punching bag and, you know, everyone goes after Walmart and not target for being just, you know, as bad in other ways or whatever. Oh, yeah. The excursion was just the worst com- in the suburban was slightly not as worst. The suburban was not as bad. And honestly, I don't mind the suburban. I, but I mean, it has like a giant gas guzzler, yeah. like stupid vehicle you don't need unless yeah. you're, have, but you know, aren't we like a little kids. bit? Uh, contrarian on this a little bit, yeah, because how uh, we love the Raptor. Like, I would the have Raptors, a, I would have a Raptor, even yeah. though it literally gets well, now zero it has, city one highway. Now it has the Echo Boost <laughs> with a with sixteen stupid, speed. I don't care transmission. for that. I don't care for that. I would get the one with the big V eight. Um, yeah, because it's it's a it's supposed to be a ridiculous car. It might it might as well be ridiculous on all fronts. Yeah, uh, including like mileage uh, and um, the excursion, it just wasn't like a nice package. It was just a big thing. Oh, did you know um, that that reminded me that the Bronco, there was a four door version. Uh, the nineties. No. Yeah, there was a four door version, and it was basically the pre excursion, um, but it was kind of cool because it was. A Bronco with four doors. Um, and it still had the cap. It had the cap. And you That's could take off cool. the cap mm. and it would make like... Oh my god. If that you took it off, so it would cool. be like an open back uh, SUV. That would be really cool. Yeah. They're really rare. I don't know how you got one. Mm-hmm. I don't think it was custom. I think it came from Ford. But anyways, yeah. So they're out there. They're very rare. I saw a truck. Now, I, I had a tweet like... Two weeks ago, again, my Twitter's garbage and all Twitter's garbage. But mm-hmm. I said that every truck, like pre nineteen ninety six, is terrible, uh, which is true. Not incorrect, yeah. Uh, but I saw a truck that was actually interesting. This is what sparked the tweet. Was I saw a pickup truck, and I don't think any modern truck is cool. Uh, but it was a early two thousands, like Ford Super Duty, super short cab, short bed, which I've never. I don't think I've ever seen that. Like it was, so the actual footprint of it was tiny, so it but it was like, like really stout. Did it basically look like um, a big rig without like the trailer? Was Kinda. it still a dually? No, 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 oh, okay. no, no. It was just like an F two fifty, but it was just the. It was like the very so there stout no back body seats. style. No back seats. Wow, not even the. Weird. It was a super short cab. Not even the. Not even the crew cab. I wonder if that was like just converted. Like it used it to was, be part it of. It wouldn't have the two fifty badge on it. I, yeah. I don't even know what the badge was, but it was a thing. It was because they offer like a million configurations, but no one would order this configuration. So when you see it, it's like it actually yeah. stops in your tracks. You're like, wow, this is so strange that would be weird. looking. It I, was cool. It was cool just because it was like this really like robust looking truck, yeah. but it had a really short footprint and was just small. I have seen like it parked in my neighborhood. Even I'm sure just a visitor because it it's like once a year I'll see it. Uh, it's that stupid big rig pickup truck. Like it oh, has like, the, like the, it's like an the international, international or CSX nine thousand two hundred sixty one whatever it is yeah yeah and it's just absolutely ridiculous that those exist mm-hmm. um and I remember sending you a link to maybe in the group chat we were just like sending making fun of this dealership that had these ridiculous trucks and one of them was um that international like pickup. Um, and it, w- it wasn't expensive anymore because obviously no one wants one other than the people who want one. Uh, and it was like, hey, yeah, it was like $20,000. People, people who want one are having a real moment in this country. Yeah, hey, seriously. Speaking of that, that reminds me. Did I tell you that the H2s are going up a shocking amount right now? Wait, are they're increasing me? in no. value? H2s are going up. How? I had this theory that no one that's driving an H2 wants to because they're like underwater on their loan. But now it makes sense because they're having a real moment in this Maga. country. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. We know. I wh- wait. What, what is your source for this? I don't want to believe it. My uncle had one, and he won't listen to this. He was the exact sort of dude. He Everyone got, yeah. really does but have wait, a racist but, uncle. No, do but you, I mean, Chris, do you have a racist uncle? I don't yeah, think he's probably. a racist. I think he just sucks. Mm, it sounds like he's a racist. If he has an H two, and he's proud of it. He's racist. So but why he got they, rid of it? Why are he they did. going up in value? Or like, in what sense? Like, are they are there they ads? Were, were they selling? Are people? They're not all destroyed this somehow. This was this was probably someone offered him more than what he listed it for. That's how much people want this right now. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. It's a weird again. 
as we head hurtling towards another financial crisis. Yeah. Uh, I the Hummer nostalgia is at an all time high. But for and those the Bush though, years, the H one maybe. But H ones have gone down, I believe. What? What? Yeah, right. None of this makes yeah, sense. H threes are. No, no one that wants one of these has any taste. The H two was such plastic looking garbage. It was a. It was a. Tahoe. It was a Tahoe with plastic yellow panels that I guess were not plastic, but it looked like garbage. Like, like, like. This is no. This is not meant to be um, a positive mark, but the truck was like sort of interesting. The truck variant, but still was it was. Yeah, they say the H. 3T was like the best thing that the brand ever made. Yeah, because that looked cool. That was, was right sort before. Of cool. That was right before they went. I don't under. think I've ever seen about an it. H3T in person. I've seen. I've seen one. them. Yeah. You live in Texas long enough. Oh, yeah, to see <laughs> you'll see one. But still, overall, terrible, terrible. Just like if you're talking about like a marketing grift, that is that the whole brand because it's just a Tahoe. The and the G wagon is a piece of farm equipment that was made for military surplus At least in the seventies, I guess. There, but now it doesn't. It shed its heritage because it's an all new platform. Is it even Bonnie but O'Brien? That, I mean, the, the bright analogy would be like if the GL came out, GLK came out, and it was on a C class platform, and it looked like a G wagon. That would be an analogy. The H two was just like garbage on top of garbage. Like the G wagon still was a true to itself thing it really was the genuine 40 year old article and if you still want that old outdated thing it's like you just go get it and there it is look into my eyes and tell me anything about a mercedes g65 amg from three years ago that there was anything genuine in that vehicle genuine it was this 40 year old chassis it's 40 year old chassis with a v12 that they sold to horrible people for three hundred thousand dollars yeah Yeah, those people are garbage yes yeah yeah and but when it, you lock the doors, it went... Wait, but also, like, every it. supercar also, like, probably sold to not around. the best people in the world. Yeah. yeah. Um, I know who's one buying good person, these days? Yeah. Good people? Uh, I know one good person that owns a McLaren. I know one good person that owns a Lexus LFA. They're the only ones. They're the only ones. Um, also, hey, if you do have crazy money and want to be a good person, LFAs. 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 Yeah. Everyone should own an LFA. I, Everyone should. After we overthrow this uh, government. I mm-hmm. thought about them today. I like replied to two. I, I think about them every day. They're very good. Um, Our friend Blake has driven one. What? Yeah. With Paul Hawker. T- yeah, I was about to say to the... R.I.P. What? Noted no. pedophile. How did... Okay. <laughs> There's a lot to unpack here, but first of all... <laughs> Wait, who? Paul Walker? <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Paul Walker, not Blake. Not Blake wrong. <laughs> Blake, I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. Uh, I would have said noted pervert uh, if I was talking. Uh, yeah. Noted sob pervert. Noted Blake pervert. Wrong. Mm. Yeah, he's going to send you that picture with the sob with human eyes again. That's, which he sent to me. You can just look at his uh, Twitter uh, head, header. It's He sent that to me again today. Oh... Anyways, what? Wait, we won't go deep into this, but he we'll drove an LFA with. Week. God damn yeah. it! The mystery. Well, now deepen, deepen. Mm-hmm. The first time I saw an LFA, and well, no, never mind. I saw five LFAs together when I went to TMG in Germany. Because mm. do you know Toyota Motorsports in Cologne is the European service center for all you. LFAs, oh, cool. wow. you can't get them serviced anywhere in Europe. Wow. You have to take them to Cologne, Germany. That's wow. crazy. That's the UK. That's all of it. That'd be kind of like the XJ220 here. There's like a service center. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that I only know that from like the Petrolicious video or mm-hmm. like something like that. But there was like one specialty shop that even received all the engineering plans, and they're the the shop to send to in the states. This what is Blake's is... header on Twitter. That's not a sob. No, that's not a no. sob. It is his unborn fetus. Yep. In his own womb. Blake's first selfie. Amazing. Anyway, uh, the so is there? There's not an because I've seen all of the like storied '90s supercars from Houston. Yeah. That are still here. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's the one. I hate that. I thought it was Steve Buscemi at first, but it isn't. It, it is. Steve Buscemi is kind of the sob of people. Steve McLaren F1, is only, McLaren Philadelphia is the only place that can service it. So they were born and raised there? 
Yeah. Well, not boring, but I'm yeah. sorry. Mm-hmm. Operated West. In oh. <laughs> West Philadelphia. West yeah. in Philadelphia. Radwood going to West Philly is the best idea, Brad. And or I'm just yeah. gonna say Brad because that's who I know out of that group. But mm-hmm. same. Uh, is there an XJ220 that lives in Houston? Yep, I sat in it. Yeah, and it went to Monterey last year. Yeah, I saw it in Monterey last yeah, year. Yeah, but uh, I so Nympha's Nymph, no, Nympha's on navigation. I went there uh, to meet up with someone, and as I was walking through the parking lot, XJ220 sitting there, green, beautiful. I thought it was black or blue. Blue. Oh, sorry, blue. no, it was navy blue. Navy blue. Navy blue. Yeah, it I, was on Leno's garage. Yeah. Oh, it's oh, that. it was the one? Houston. It car. was. Yeah, that was the yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this guy, I walked up to it. Of course, I'm going to take a picture of it. Uh, and as I'm taking a picture of it, uh, the owner is walking out of the restaurant, and I'm like, oh, I'm just taking a picture of your car. And he's like, well, that's cool. Do you want to sit in it? And of course, like before he can even unlock the door, I'm trying to like get in. Uh, Turgid as hell. Yeah. So I'm like, he's basically like forcing me into the car, and I'm like, okay, I'm okay with this. And I'm sitting in it. It's really cool. Um, it is really well the car is cool the interior is awful um, oh yeah gotta yeah. be and and like they had the, 40 dollars. the door sill is like a mile wide to get into it like you just do not look dignified in any way there's no dignity getting into uh an xt220 um anyways it was just like it's just a, it was such a weird experience and the guy was super nice and he was I didn't want to take a picture of me in it, but he was like, give me your camera. I'm going to take a picture of you in it. For some reason, he's Italian. Don't um, think he's Italian. Please. I don't know. Okay. Uh, but anyways, yeah. So uh, then that car like appeared in Monterey, and then it appeared on like, Jay Leno's garage. And the guy uses it. like He drives it around. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, which is super cool. I sat in one that was navy blue at the Peterson. Yeah. Mm. It was formerly owned by Heinz Harold Frenz. As, uh, do you know that he was the one of... The of Heinz? Guess Ketchup? Yep. Hey. John Kerry. Yep. <laughs> Have you ever been to Pittsburgh near no. the Heinz building? No. The old factory? That's... That entire area smells like ketchup. Whoa. It's not terrible, Okay. but it does all smell like ketchup. That's interesting. Do you know that Heinz Harold Frenson was one of the only drivers to not license his name to mm-hmm. many champs in the 90s? Really? So all of those models for his car say German driver. No way. <laughs> yeah. It's I a German a, driver here. I had a terrible, I had a Formula One game. It's not actually terrible. I had a Formula One game on N64. Hell yeah. Uh, called like World Grand Prix or something like that. And they had every driver except Jacques Villeneuve. Because this was like 98 season. You lost season. nothing. No, but this is the 98 season. And he was the champion. And he didn't license his name. So it was just like. Oh my God. I never you know, even thought about so that. Weird. But I'm like, I know, I have and a very is, cursory knowledge of. F1, yeah. but I didn't even think about the industry aspect of that. That you... This doesn't really happen now. This was like a That's thing. so weird. Well, because your, in your driver's contract, they, yeah. they have the rights to your license for merchandise while you drive for them. Mm-hmm. You can rescind that wow. after you're done driving. Ah. But, yeah. I also didn't think about that, that like there's merchandising. The cheapest Lewis Hamilton merch is actually probably the Lewis Hamilton flavor. Not Lewis Hamilton flavor, but it is his flavor of Monster. That they sell in Europe. Hmm. Ooh. Yeah. Never had that. It's not... I tried the Valentino Rossi one mm-hmm. while I was in Europe. Piss. Interesting. Uh, uh, are you familiar with the legend of Mattress Max F40? Yes. Did you ever go to Gallery Furniture while it was on the show floor? No. no. I know the man that led to the restoration of that car when someone else bought it. As a side note, yeah, Mattress Mac is a... Noted homophobe? Noted homophobe, local, like, mattress magnate, Hero. furniture magnate, I guess. He is, like, I, I will say this, you know, he's, like... Um, a very prominent Republican. Yeah, oh, very yeah. prominent Republican. Uh, and, like, I couldn't even... I For people who don't live in Houston, it's really hard. He's not just, like, like your furniture, local... Furniture magnate who became a he's TV not commercial just, star. He's not just, like, that, though. Like, his, like... His magnitude is so much more than that for whatever reason. It's so, like, I bet you he really regrets, like, he probably doesn't, but that, like, he has to stick to the Mattress Mac, like, brand for his whole thing. Uh, But he is, like... You know it's his legal name now. I hope it is. It's not. Yeah. Uh, But, yeah, like, he... (laughs) He's... It's hard to describe what he is. He's not just, like, that weird local commercial, like, celebrity. He is, like... uh, 
insanely wealthy by way of selling mattresses and like cheap furniture, basically. Cheap labor, hiring people right out of prison and hiring yeah. them for minimum wage or less yeah. to sell furniture and stuff. And but my, my connection is... <laughs> we're going to get a lot of pushback from Houstonians, too, because like, he does oh, a lot of filled traffic philanthropic uh, work. He, but does. he did a lot of stuff with Hurricane Harvey. and that's, he, does, yeah. he does good, but at the same time... But there, there are, are also things, controversial yeah. Like, yeah. aspects. There's too. controversial aspects. When I, was, when I was younger, my sister was... My sister knew... One of our neighbors was a... My sister's age. A girl my sister's age. And she... Rebecca Pillowtop? Yep. She uh, would go and hang out like <clears throat> with her one of her friends who was Matrix Max's daughter. Yeah. And they would have sleepovers there or whatever. So I just heard this third hand that, like, he would buy a new Ferrari every year mm-hmm. and legends like that. That's that's all I knew. Yeah. So, he keeps that, like, very discreet. So Mattress Mac had an F40 mm-hmm. that a couple years after new, when it was, like, time to sit on him, he decided to display it in the showroom of gallery furniture. Mm-hmm. The people of Houston were not kind to that F40 and did not respect any sort of no touching rule. Are you familiar with the uh, the food court at Gallery Furniture? No. They sell Coke and they sell hot dogs, kind of like a Costco. Mm -hmm. Do you know how much an F40 gas tank costs when you have to trudge it out, replace it because people have been pouring Coca Cola into the gas tank of an F40? They shoved a hot dog down there, but that F40. I think was four hundred thousand dollars to restore at the time. Wow! wow. Yeah, wow. and the That's man insane. who owns it now is the man who owns the yellow F fifty. Tell me about this man because let me tell you my connection to this yellow F fifty. Mm-hmm. Have we talked about this? I think it was on an episode of the show, or we were drunk and talked we about were, it. It was the second one. Sounds good. It sounds undignified, but anyway, I when I was a kid, I Slosh went to the Ferrari hammered. dealer um, to just visit, and uh, because I was. 16 or 15 or whatever and uh that car was getting its battery serviced it was owned at the time by a man named paul frame who was eventually indicted for massive embezzlement but he bought he bought the first ferrari f50 in the states and it was yellow and it looked insanely good and he he had the first one in the states and there used to be a story actually i think this was on the podcast there was a story about it on the ferrari website and yeah. everything mm-hmm. this was on the podcast sorry sorry everyone i'll let myself out remind the people yeah what happened he went to jail yep and i saw the car on richmond driving around once yeah a long time ago it's weird because so it got to... sold yeah there's to... a a collector who i will i'm not going to name okay. uh but he owns every one of the big Ferraris mm. in yellow, Ooh. except the F40. Okay. Because painting an F40 is sacrilege, and they mm. were only sold in the U.S. in right. Rosa Corsa. Yes. Mm-hmm. What were you going to say? No, just that um, Houston, despite being uh, sort of under the radar when it comes to just interest in general, uh, and also despite being the fourth largest city uh, in the nation... Like, we have, obviously, there's a lot of oil money here. Um, and so there are a lot of interesting cars here. Um, and the ownership, I think, is pretty discreet, especially if you compare it to, like, L.A. or Miami or something. Um, like, there are some really interesting collections here, but no one knows about them. No, and it's so low-key. Houston is what ruined Cars and Coffee for me forever. Because one of the last ones they had over at... Oh, God. The first place where Houston Cars and Coffee was, the Weird Shopping Center. Oh, oh, everything in Houston is a Weird City? Shopping Center. No, yeah, not yeah. Memorial yeah. City. Uh, the one before that. Oh. Vintage Park? I think it was Vintage everything Park. Everything in Houston is a shopping center. There used to, it used to be at Uptown Park before that. And then, oh, my God. There's Up a Dog hilarious Park. There's a hilarious video taken first person where a white C6 Corvette slides sideways towards the camera person. Oh, yeah. And it's... It is hysterical. I hope no one was hurt. But um, that's Houston Cars and Coffee for you. There's also like that uh, infamous video of like I think it was two C sixes that were doing a drag race in the woodlands. That's the woodlands. That is yep. five minutes from my grandmother's house. Oh yeah, <laughs> not to dox my grandma. And they ran that's like into three each minutes other. from my parents' house. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> Anyways, um, sorry, story top bro. The yeah, the last Cars and Coffee I went to at that place was Ferrari of Houston came out 
They brought a Schumacher Ferrari and started it and revved it for a crowd of people. How was that? You know? Good crowd reaction? Yeah, pretty good. But also there are a bunch of people who are like, oh, it's so loud. And I'm like... <laughs> I hope there are people shocked. making like the volume down. Like, can you turn it down a little? Turn it down. Can you turn it down? That, that, that is also the car show where I saw someone uh, rev their terrible Pontiac until it threw a rod. Oh, wow. It was an LS, too. Like, that it should not have thrown a rod. I was at one of those Car and Coffee ones at Vintage Park, and they, like, a GTO crashed into some trees. Leaving. Oh, I was at that one. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah, my yeah. God. Uh, the other thing? Oh, God. What does that remind me of? That's... LS. Oh, yeah. They're Hennessy's bespoke engine that is actually just a oh, right. off, not off the shelf, but it's, it's, it's an LS7 built by other people. Yeah. I saw the headline. I didn't read it. I didn't read into it, but I saw the headline today about uh, their specialty engine. It's and it's a so, Bosey article, so get ready for some Bosey yeah. if you're a Bosey lover. Like their whole thing is like it's it's like a lot of marketing. Like it's just marketing and hype and like it's that's what draws in people. It's what draws in um, who is that the rock star who bought the Steven Venom? Tyler. That's the one. Yeah, uh, wasn't he on? Was that on Top Gear? Like he uh, was on Top Gear. He was one of the I think so celebrity yeah, in mm-hmm. the blah blah car. Um, anyways, but yeah, for Jeremy Clarkson punched someone because yeah. the sandwich was cold or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, and then like the Jalopnik posts too are vast and wide as far as like the uh, many interesting things that come out of all of that. So. Yes, yeah. they're the they're the Tesla of tuning houses. Yeah, yeah. Oh come on, that's absurd. That's absurd. That's yeah, that's unfair to Hennessy. Oh bullshit! Tesla's <laughs> made five hundred thousand cars. Four, four and a wait, half. Okay, wait, no, wait. no, I know. I have. I'll I'll be on Kevin's side in all this too because like I'll make fun of Tesla, but also Tesla. The whole idea though, when you take a step back, is pretty amazing. Oh, it's so like, amazing. Yeah, yeah. too. Um, oh, yeah, they're so just as much companies. of a legitimate I mean, the car maker. Business, yeah. Oh my god, they're just as much in a, a real car company as someone like I don't know, Aston Martin, someone who makes a lot of cars. But like, yeah, they're definitely scale. still a yeah. low volume trying they're to push volume, their way. They, yeah, they're it's a lot of chest puppery. Um, but they are like, the, I guess the difference is that they're actively trying to market like or build a car not for the people um uh, but for that $35,000 model 3 is yeah. never coming it's never coming i mean it will be once like they hit the used car market uh but i'm i'm um sh- uh, i i'm very curious i've never driven a model 3 and i no, really, I really want, want to, to. and mm-hmm. now they're like you know i sat in one today did you did you mm-hmm. Oh, at the uh, Tesla boutique. Yeah. Okay. We test drove a Model S, but yeah. I sat in the Model 3 in the showroom. It's, I, it's I, nice. It's I've, a nice interior. My cousin bought one in California. Um, and here, they're, like when I saw the first one, I saw, I think it was at uh, the place where I get my car washed. And um, I saw one. I was like, oh, my God, like Model 3. This is so rare. What a weird thing. And then thing. when you go to the West Coast, it's like your, your radar... Yeah, it fires when oh, you see one, but then you see one you're every right. Sorry. minute. Every the first minute. one, Austin. the first one that I saw was when we saw that in LA. Yeah, we saw one in LA. We saw for a couple in LA in December. Radwood. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were there for Radwood, and that's we saw that, and like mind blown because it's it's not even because it was such an amazing engineering. Like, whoa, like look at this. It was just like, rare. It was just rare. It was just, just like the first one. Wow, we've seen, here's this know? thing that everyone is literally talking about. Yeah, um, and it was a reality. You you didn't. Yeah. Know. Okay. Well. All right. <laughs> it's still going. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. springs. Gotcha. But, um, well, here's the thing, though, is that, like, so it was rare, but it was rare for, like, a really brief time. Like, I want to say, like, six months when, like, all same, that controversy I mean, it was, was the gone. same rollout with the Model S. I remember how excited yeah. I was when I saw my first Model S. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. Just, and now so cool. they're everywhere. Model 3s are everywhere. Like, in Houston, like... I see a few every day. I yeah, I do too. I, I'm at that point too. in Austin so, as well. Yeah, like so it's it's not rare. It's still anymore, kind of exciting, but it's neat. And I haven't driven one, and I want to drive one. I still mm-hmm. can't tell if I think they look good or not. I think they look I good. Think they look good. I think they look good. I miss this is I miss the first gen Model S. No, no, no. not me. With not the me. mouth, 
The, yeah, I, I like the mouth better than the blunt. Because the, the mouth was face. like this transitional. But that was it, right? Because the mouth was a transitional. Like cars need grills because you need air intake areas, mm-hmm. and so they made it was a, a face. It was totally a fake grill. Yeah, yeah. and then this digital grill. Yeah, so then they erased it. It was like you don't need this, and now it just it's looks like good. it looks like a it looks like a Panamera. <laughs> Um, yeah. So, or actually, it kind of looks like a Cayman, like a newer Cayman. Hey, mm-hmm. Speaking of the Panamera, yeah. And also, we can move on to any actual big topics that we have instead no, of tangent city. We have city. nothing to talk it's about specifically. But <laughs> yeah. uh, so the Panamera Sport Turismo wagon has mm-hmm. been on sale in America for six months. I feel like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Have you seen one on the street? Yes. I haven't. I have a story. It's very short. I saw one in the chalk color, Sport Turismo, and I was like, I mean, it seems so easy to me. I'm not in the market for a new $120,000 wagon, but if I was, I would buy that one and not put a lot of miles on it and then sell it for literally twice as much as any other 2019 model Panamera in 10 years because that's the one that everyone's going to want. It's going to be the California with a manual. The California with it. Oh, was the that Ferrari? Thing? Was that they made? They one sold there? six. Oh my! Goodness. The last Ferrari with a manual is the 2011 Ferrari California, and they sold six. And one lives here in Houston, I believe. Oh my goodness! I'm gonna. There was a good video about the. Uh, I I actually I like the. Um, uh, what is it? The VinWiki videos with uh, Ed Bolin. And he talks about how the market, the Murcielago manual market, LP640, it's like there's so few and it's like the value has really shot up. And through that, he's been able to, you know, buy and sell and do interesting things, you know, make a profit on one and then funnel it into another or something. It's just like, it is interesting. These like hyper rare cars where there's just so few manuals like that's. That's a thing. Hyper rare versions of things that were not standard. Like a Murcielago right. was never standard. Right. right. So you <clears throat> wanted to talk to me about a race car. About and singular race car, yeah. And and race car. What is your favorite racing car? I like the MP four twenty seven, which was the twenty twelve car. Oh, Kev Chris just made a face. Okay. I was swallowing my scotch away from All right. All the right. microphone, but also... That was a good car. It was a good car. It was their last good car, actually. It was their last good car. But no, I just I, I find it interesting of like, you but, like a very weird one. No. You don't like a weird one. You like the 05 one. It's the best one. It, yeah. Oh, okay. It was... How was the 05 weird? The horns. They were cool. They were very cool. The, the car was dominant in that... Fragile. It was fragile. It was terrible in that sense. Uh, make this brief. They, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I, I really can't love any 09 to 2016 car just because aesthetically I just don't like them very much. But I mean, I know I if, you, if you if the, you grow up and that's like your prime era, I understand totally. Like, And they did get better. They definitely got less ungainly and everything, but it was just a weird aesthetic time because of the regulations and everything, and then the step noses. And for me, oh five to like oh eight, those are weird because those got those were still the really stubby short cars, but they had gotten so busy aero wise that they didn't. But I don't think of them as stubby sense. and short. And then the 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 oh five McLaren had the low nose, mm-hmm. which looked like a future brawn. And uh, it was just so cool. And, uh, like, Renault started developing, like, the kick-up, like, the rear kick-ups in front of the rear tires that looked so cool. Um, yeah, that 05 car was great, and it was so dominant, and it was, like, the proper machine for Kimi until it wasn't, and he couldn't actually get the title. But I remember, like, a you know, there was a three-race stretch from Spain to Monaco where, he, where Kimi led every single racing lap for, for three races straight. Um uh, it was interesting, and they had no uh, tire changes that year, and Ferrari complained a lot, and then they did have tire changes the mm. next year. And then Michael Schumacher won again. Weird. Yeah, he did start winning again, not the championship. No. Um, I actually was root. Uh, such was my dislike for Alonso that I was rooting for Schumacher at the end of 06. See, I know all these names, even okay. though I don't watch it's yeah. racing. Yeah, that's fine. Because Michael Schumacher had a branding opportunity with Tag Heuer. 
And Kimi I, Räikkönen? Kimi, Kimi Räikkönen did. There was a billboard in He's Houston attractive. with Kimi. He He's is. attractive. There was a billboard in Houston with Kimi on it, like back when I was in college. I yeah. I, I kept hitting the table with it, so I actually took my TOG Formula One off. Oh, my uh, God. But also, the Michael Schumacher TOG exists. Yeah. And the Kimi does. And they were sold as a set, even though they did not race for the same team at oh, the same my God. time. Oh, that's super I can't weird. wait until yeah. we have Blake on the podcast because we'll probably sneak watches in and oh. Evan will die further than he's already died when we talk about sobs. So, yeah. 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 The other, the only other weird thing is we both grew up in the same place, a, a little bit apart. Yeah, and how weird the Woodlands in is. Five decades apart. I'm sixty-four years old. Yeah, he's Kevin is very old. Yeah. So you're one of the first people that lived there in the seventies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Me and George Mitchell. George Mitchell. George yeah. Mitchell. Yeah. He's our client. We actually helped to uh, with some of the branding work for the Woodlands Development oh. Company. R.I.P. R.I.P. Um, oh, is he dead? Maybe. I went to a school named after him, so that's usually a pretty safe bet. <laughs> it's it's a it's a corporate owned city. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The Woodlands. I think it's actually now Townships a real township. Too. Yeah, yeah, maybe. But like, you remember how weird cars are in the Woodlands? Um, I remember a time. There was a time. Uh, I mean, when it was not the the second smallest area per capita that had a Ferrari dealership. Yeah, that's before my time. I haven't lived there in a very long time. It's also before my time by a year, or after my time by a year. Okay, it. Yeah, I I don't know. I, I remember you would never see exotic cars, but you would never see exotic cars anywhere. It was weird. If you we talked about this last time, but if you had a Diablo in the nineties, you were a weirdo and you jumped through massive hoops to get this car and you mm-hmm. weren't just a rich guy, you were rich and had a death wish. And wanted this thing that was yep. weirdly unattainable. And I remember when I drove to school, there was I remember seeing once. I said I remember seeing glimpses of it twice. I thought once in traffic and once seeing a glimpse of it, it was a blue Diablo S V with the giant S V graphic on the side in red. Wow. I saw it two times. I can remember it looked cool as hell. Yeah. Need for Speed like, Three, baby. It looked okay. cool yeah, as yeah. hell. And the you know, colors clashed, but it was just so the, cool. The graphic was cool. Also, the S V was a much more beautiful script then than it is on the new garbage ones, where it now is it evocative the same of the Mira. Script that was used on the Ford Ranger Splash. No, that is actually incorrect. Factually, it's in the Wikipedia. Hey, real quick, well we're, we're talking on about Wikipedia. Them. Yeah. St- <laughs> oh no. Uh, find out how many Ys is in the word Kashi. I, yeah. I remember my other I mean, I remember another exotic car experience where I followed a green Ferrari F three fifty five and I basically followed it to its house Ooh, just to see where I live. But that's it, creepy. There was never like there was no cars like that because there was no cars. Ferrari wasn't selling ten thousand cars a year. Yeah. Like it was just unheard yeah. of. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I just have like good memories of those things, and I would never see an Aventador and think, "Oh, that's an interesting man." I'm like, "Oh, that's a rich guy." A lot of, not a lot of taste. <laughs> it was a couple years into it's matte purple with uh, chrome accents. I'm not a fan. Does Lamborghini know what they're doing anymore? Um, In ter- they're, they're they're fast. They're making money only with they're the turning money. profit. Only with money. the uh, wait for his oh. eye roll, the Perfumante. No, I like them. Okay, when they come out with a car where the entire thing is that mulched carbon fiber, yeah. that would be cool. Because mm-hmm. yeah. that's cool. Okay, it's, that's the cool. marbled carbon fiber is yeah. very cool. Yeah. The Performante, I don't believe the lap time. I'm a truther. <laughs> oh, don't no. believe the lap time. I don't terrible. believe the Aventador, the new one. I don't believe that the, one. The Aventador SJW? Yeah, the, the Aventador oh, Social Justice Warrior. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they, they, Are we up to four hours yet? Yeah. Okay. But we should, I, like, labor, that was the one thing I actually did want to talk about where it's just like, I know so many people that are just so hype about what Lambo is doing right now, and I think they have no idea what their brand is. I think at most you should say, that's interesting, and move on, and have show no visible actual interest in Lamborghini. They've sold less cars than McLaren, who is, you know, really? they've sold less cars than McLaren two years in a row here in the U.S. There oh. was 6,000 Performantes in Monterey. 
No. Were there five? There was there are six thousand and one like five seven uh, yeses yeah, or whatever. Like, I can't count. All the I don't interesting, know all the interesting men, men no, uh, were there. No, 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 no. Oh no, my no. god! There, everything that's everything that's bad about Car Week, just like the showy, like people revving at stoplight, like it, Lamborghini uh, exemplifies all of this I stuff. I can't imagine. Yeah, they are the Mustang of the exotic car. That's world. exactly what it is. Because uh, I saw the last time I saw an Aventador, Aventador in Austin. I don't know why I said that twice uh, to emphasize that oh, it was so a base nice. one. To emphasize uh, it was not the SAW. Sure. No, it was just a base one. Yeah. And it was a drop top, which they're not really drop tops. It's, hey, here are two panels you can take off. Yeah. Uh, it was in second gear the entire way across the Congress Bridge into downtown. Mm-hmm. He did that. Was it just like four times up Bouncing and down. off of the rev limiter? Oh, yeah. He was doing damage. Like it was a good he was noise. Probably definitely I, doing do damage. Do you find it like and that's the amazing? E-gear, right? Is it E gear still? It's a dual clutch on the Aventador. No, the Aventador is, I think, a single clutch that's until what I'm recently. That's what E gear is. Oh yeah, it would E-gear be. E gear is there, or maybe that's the Audi symptom, but I don't. I think it's still the single clutch. I e- was literally it like, might not be E-gear. who is E gear? <laughs> is Bob Eager? Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, no, that's terrible. I like that there are people who, uh, think that the rev limiter bounce sound is, like, impressive. Like, Mm -hmm. it's a good thing. There was so many, like, Aventador SVs with, like, chrome wraps and, like, aftermarket bigger wings, like, around Monterey, and they just stuck out, like, ugly chrome store thumbs. Yep. Um, Mm. what was the last, like, cool Lamborghini for you? Um, for me, okay, well, this is a good question. Mm-hmm. I would say, controversially, yes. Uh, I definitely have one in my mind that's the coolest, but as far as, like, lukewarm cool, I have, like, 15 examples. The Aventador J was cool. It was. That was a one-off. That They made one. Mm-hmm. The, you shouldn't have asked this question. The Reventon was cool. That was, uh, like. Reventon. The Revanton. It was like a stealth fighter looking mm-hmm. Murcielago with yeah. angled body panels. The the first Gallardo Super Legera was cool. Mm-hmm. Yes, it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the Aventador. But only that Bal- one. The Aventador Balboni was cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and the coolest for me in the last you know twenty years, the Diablo six The final Diablo. I was with about the to say Audi that, yeah. refined styling. With it the was so cool. Three hundred ZX headlights. Yes, they had 300ZX headlights for years before, but this everything else was refined. They kind of yeah. smoothed out a lot of surfaces. It had it kind of was previewing this Audi led future. Yeah, um, and it looked really good, and they held up really well, and the wheels were cool, and the offset was cool, and it was just like this really great package. So yeah. probably a terrible car to drive, probably. but that's what makes Terrifying. it interesting. Sure. There was the only Lambo that's ever actually really stolen my heart was a Diablo. I even want to say it's a VT. Yeah, it's something we didn't get it, here. No, but no, we did get that. Here. That was the viscous traction. It had the. It was the first one, the four wheel drive. Okay. The VT was the first one with four wheel drive. Also, can I interject one second? Absolutely. There was a Diablo, the Diablo GT. We never got here. And the Diablo GT was the. It was like the racing version of the six point oh. And my sister saw one in Houston and sent me a picture on her in like two thousand two. Wow. And I like looked up about it later, and there was some, con- like not Congress, but some kind of lawmaker in Texas that had one How? in the early two thousands, and he would drive it back between Houston and Dallas, wow. or Houston and Austin. A lawmaker in Texas? Yes. Well, was he had, like okay. a judge or something, and I he had like so. a judge plate that he could just put on whatever? I think so. Like how? If- yeah. So yeah, there was a. There was a VT that yeah. was always at the shop I hung out at in high school in the Woodlands. Yeah. And it was a VT 6.0 six speed. Ooh. And it was orange, and but the wing was still carbon fiber. Oh, that's cool. And it was like, I don't, I think it, that one is a one of one weird one off thing back when Lambo would still, yeah. I mean, Lambo still does that, but this is like back in the Sultan of Brunei right times where oh, you yeah. don't tell yeah. nobody about your special, you don't tell nobody. Yeah. yeah. You you're don't gonna sell it Instagram. to a mass murderer, you and don't you're make not going to tell it. Called that Diablo VT, <laughs> that purple Diablo VT. Hi everyone, it's me. <laughs> don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> um, what do you think was the last cool Lamborghini? 
Yeah. I've never been a huge Lamborghini fan. Well, me neither, with. but I gave nine examples. Yeah, you guys don't so, do cocaine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, if I'm honest, like, even the Diablo didn't hold my interest, like, very strongly. I mean, the special versions, like the SV, were really interesting, but honestly, the Countach is probably the, like, where I stopped having an interest, which meant, like, in elementary school. I was mm-hmm. like, all right, this is it. I had so many good posters. Attention. And whenever people talk about how the 25th anniversary was bad, I say the 25th anniversary was the best. But <laughs> the 25th ir- anniversary is the only good one. I'll <laughs> irk you by saying like it was revived with the Perfumante. Oh, that forged you... carbon fiber is so cool. Okay, yeah, it is cool. That I want the whole body to mean it. it. Are you kidding me? That's it. It's so because I don't really. Like, the Huracan is Otherwise, so boring. Otherwise, like uh, like older. Lamborghini is obviously super cool. What makes the Performante cool? Because they've ha- they used uh, that name and it meant nothing for so long. Uh, As opposed to the baseline terrible performance. Because I feel the like they're dialing line. it back now, like where it's just not like just an image exercise, I suppose. Um, I would argue that they've made them effective on track, yeah. but one track, and that's the Nürburgring, and it's to throw up a lap time yes. so they could say, hey, remember then, how Lamborghinis used to be terrible and yeah. dog shit and too heavy and not do anything well? These ones are less heavy and <laughs> yeah. less dog shit, and it goes very fast this around de- one racetrack. This was developed from all our racing experience, racing one car in the last 60 years. The the terrible... Well, they race a Super Trofeo Gallardos, and they race uh, they raced a terrible Murciago at Le Mans and didn't start. Japanese Lam- Japanese Lamborghini Owners Club. They entered that car, I think, ten years in a row, and the I think Diablo. it did. Was this the no- eight laps total? Was this the Nomad Diablo? I think so. Oh, that's the coolest. Oh, that's that is cool. Well, like, they were better no. back back when they were worse, and I hate to be that person, oh, but no, that's how true. I feel about that's, Lambo. That's how I feel too. And they're still bad. Uh, was there any other race cars that you wanted to talk about? Was there any GT race cars that you want to talk about besides the Nomad Diablo? Chris, do you actually have a favorite race car? He doesn't know no, about racing. I don't know anything about racing. Yeah, that's no that that was like that's why I'm looking at I you. I know I know things about like uh like on a very surface level. Oh, I have that. This book that I've splayed on my countertop, which is um sports racing from like nineteen sixty one to Ooh, so is that your answer? Something. But anyway, it's only because the photography is super interesting and the men are very handsome and the cars are very cool. But there was I, definitely a period of time where racing car drivers, they went from being very handsome to the, the late 70s yeah. to early 90s was very unkind. Now, Back when they all looked like sex offenders. They're like <laughs> back to like boy band status. Yeah. Like they all look like they'd be all, they be well, all those, boy band. All those sex offender race car drivers married supermodels and yeah. had attractive children. I found like out that Nico John Rosberg. Todd. John Todd. Michelle Yeoh. What? Yes. The man is a toad. <laughs> and he married or they're they're partners. They are partners. The, she was the Bond girl in, in Tomorrow Super- Never Dies. My My favorite Pierce Brosnan oh. Bond movie. Oh, my oh. God. You are I like A View to a Kill with Roger Moore. Yeah. I like Tomorrow Never Dies with Brosnan. Okay. I like the their worst movies. The, yeah, I was gonna say, what's the, what's the worst, Craig? Because that would be your favorite, I guess. Uh, Quantum of Solace is beautiful. It is. I haven't seen it any is. of the new ones. No, Spectre for, is the uh, worst. The first one with him. Spectre is the worst. Spectre, Spectre is, the worst. is the worst. Which one was that? This is the, the most, most recent, recent one. one. Okay, I haven't yeah. seen that. It's bad. Don't. <laughs> do, you, do you have a favorite GT racing car? GT racing car. Like any kind of G, any kind of car that's not a Formula car racing. Why are you giving me the finger? <laughs> no, I just do this. I, okay. This was yeah. something I got yelled at in, in high school. This okay. is just how I rest my I'm finger. I'm going to take it extremely personally. No, I, I need to not do that because, yes, it does look like I'm flipping people off. I rest my it's yeah, middle I finger. Deserve, no, I'm, I'm, I'm painting a picture for the yeah. listener. Okay. Yeah. I, it's probably something dumb and obvious like one of the first Audi R18s before they made it ugly. Like the TDI oh. diesel hybrids. Yeah, yeah, like the 2011, 2010. Like the, I was going to say like 2012. Yeah. When they first started making them the hybrid of the e-tron. I, the those way, looked super cool. They looked very cool. How does Audi get away with calling electric things e-tron and no one makes fun of them for it? Because it's not i-tron. It's true. It, it, if it was i-tron... If people, it was i-tron, we'd e-tron have a podcast about it. E-tron cracked it wide open. Why, wait, yeah. why does e-tron sound fine? I'm actually okay with 
Etron. Etron's fine. Etron's fine. It's Why when you try to say Itron. Do you hate Kevin has this like immense hate of the marketing term for Mercedes for four wheel drive, which is Formatic. Formatic. Formatic is stupid. It sounds like an automatic <laughs> transmission. It sounds like a GM. It three, like, it's got three speeds. It sounds yeah. delightfully yeah. retro. It's got the Formatic Glidatron four speed auto. Yeah, it's delightfully it's, retro. But it's stupid and it means something stupid. Oh my and god. And coupled with a badge it's that an, means nothing because the displacement is automatic garbage. Four wheel drive. You don't have to spin the wheels yourself. Individually, you notice that the LCI C class for this current gen looks. How do they keep making the C class uglier and uglier I all the say, time? I, I don't. I'm not really aware there's dislike. an LCI. Yeah, I didn't realize either. But I, I, I think maybe they just I added some more LEDs before the facelift of the last generation. The C. The C that was a bad LCI. Bad was LCI. The last C class. Yeah. No, they the C63 black is the best thing Mercedes has ever made. They, wait, they, okay, wait, because I haven't paid attention much to AMG variants, but did they make a C6, like, where, what that was, was the last one? That was coupe only, right? It was coupe only, yeah. When was the loses last one? At coupe. I actually rode in one with Tommy Kendall once, but it loses wow. me at coupe. That's, he's, really? He's a giant Republican. <laughs> um, <laughs> they all are, all the race car drivers from that era, yeah. Dear he, Lord. he loses me, uh, that, that car yeah. loses me because it's a coupe only. I prefer... I love that generation, just C63. I, I love always, the CLK black. I I, know, the C that is really cool. Uh, and the first C63 was very cool. And I thought that Mercedes, like, out of the ballpark, like, uh, with the first generation of the last generation. Or for, uh, sorry, the pre-facelift of the first generation. The pre-what? Pre pre-what? <laughs> God <laughs> damn it. I'm like, I've lost it all. Uh, last generation pre-facelift. Um, before. Pre Pre LCI. Sorry, Kevin Thank you, won't understand it unless I say it like that. <laughs> um, I, Kevin, I think you're with me on this. The last interesting AMG was when a 63 was almost a 63. When it was yeah, a 6.2. I, I don't bother about. I, yeah, that doesn't bother me. That that engine was cool as hell. It was yeah. the coolest fucking engine. And we have like we have experience with like being disappointed by just kind of. They're very. F Here's the thing: the package for all new AMGs is fine. Like they've made them loud. They've artificially engineered them to be loud and it exceptionally fast. But they lack the soul that like that six point two. That six point two. It was felt hand dumb. built in a weird way. It was yeah. flawed almost. It was just like this. It was. It was that. It had more of the muscle car feel, that lopy cam. I mean, I, I guess the new ones can have that, and it's probably engineered in, but like that first one was just like this big ass engine. In terms also, of a V6 is never sexy. Do not at me. There are no sexy no, V6s. No, it's true. Yeah. The well, Alpha. The Alpha V6. Okay, there's one uh, sexy V6. Yeah. But. Like, the old one. Yeah, the, no, no, not the new one. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. old one. The oh, the old one. So yeah, yeah. I was going to say the so new cool. one because I was saying the old one's actually the more ones reliable than in, the new one. Those are the same ones that are in the Gilby. And the <laughs> Gilbys actually sound nice, but then when you think about like the whole thing, you're yeah. like, okay, well, can't, can't like that. <laughs> can't like what that. car you were talking about. <laughs> yeah, the Ghibli. <laughs> um, giblets. Um, My favorite yeah. part of corn. Yep. The Giblets. Yep. Buddy. I have a great lease on this thing. Yeah, it's 72 months. and yep. <laughs> I could tell I was back in the Woodlands area when I saw four Stelvios and three Levantes. Oh, oh God. I see so Hey, at least someone's buying those. Stelvios. Good on them. But Levante's garbage. What's wrong yeah, with Stelvio is cool. Stelvio is cool. Like, I do desperately want an Alpha 4C, though. I know that's brain cancer, though. Yeah. Speaking. He rented one I on did. Turo in LA yeah. last year. Yeah, I had one for four days. And it was really good. And but this one was modified just slightly, but still. I, I think comfort I think comfort modifications for performance cars are going to be the new thing. So all those yeah. boomers. Well all the boomers. You know, uh, so that four C related to that. Um I was nervous about one thing when I rented it. Um I knew that you really couldn't adjust the seat. You could go backwards and forwards, and that's about it. You couldn't go up, down, really recline much. And if you want to, there's some sort of adjustment. Like, I think it's height adjustment. It has to be dealer, like, adjusted. Uh, so I was really afraid that the owner was really tall and that I would not be able to see. 
out of the car. Uh, luckily, like, I was able to barely see out of the car, and it was fine. Um, I feel like barely seeing out of one yeah. is kind of the default. Those mirrors yeah. do nothing. No, no right. they don't do anything. And the car, the car is really cool. Like, I mean, like, just when you think about it, like, just from a conceptual standpoint, like, what the car is... A Delara carbon fiber tub. Yeah, even though the carbon fiber that's exposed uh, on the interior is not actually the tub that you yeah, see. Yeah, the which sill. Is kind of There's like a yeah, decorative the, carbon fiber yeah. that's just like, if yeah. you were to peel it up, like because it's not pretty. Like the tub is probably ugly Yeah, carbon fiber, which is fine. It is, yeah, and but it is truly like, it's a track toy. Um, and It's a like, bad lotus. It's a, yeah, basically, like it, like... You you can try to drive one like if you it's your only car. Good luck to you. Like it is. I want one as an only car. Like we were in L.A. and we were trying to park in uh, Koreatown uh, to go to a bar, and there was no parking anywhere. And so we were zipping across blocks. And this car had an aftermarket exhaust, and it was so loud, which is great elsewhere. Like when you're giving it the beans. But when you're frustrated and you're trying to find parking and every pothole feels like you're totaling the car. And it and droned, like, as the as the tack would wind down, it'd be like, and it would get to this certain frequency where it's just like... Yeah, it's not just like... like yeah, it's it just like... It would just drone. I mean, that's what drone was. Angry. It wasn't like that it was loud at idle. It yeah. was that it would get to a frequency where it just vibrates your eardrums because it's it's not well baffled or so something. So you, you just have to... Yeah. But this was an aftermarket exhaust. Yeah, you have it to, was, it was, was a neat car. It was a neat car. I mean, like I regretted because I then turned that car in, and then I got a C sixty three base, uh, current gen, and could not have been more disappointed with that car. Even the interior was was terrible. It was a not good because it didn't. It was the uh, not upgraded interior. First of all, but it should be upgraded over a regular C class. Yeah, it wasn't. and it wasn't. It wasn't. No, it was yeah. not like it just did not feel special at all. Mercedes no. and BMW have no idea what they're doing right yeah. now, and Audi, who really lagged behind the last generation of basically when everything of their lineup was the last generation, the Audis were not. Yeah, it's besides the R8, but then again, Mercedes was making yeah. the SLS, which like I was a super car in yeah. quotes, but like. Was a grand tour. Yeah, I I do it's much amazing. prefer the AMG GT yeah. to the SLS. Oh yeah, completely. Like the AMG one's a good GT car, and the other is an SLS. Six point yeah. two. You can get an AMG GT with the six point two. No, you can. Yeah, you can. No, you can. Well, oh, race car. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. But they decided not to race the turbo motor. Read into that what yeah. you will. Why would you get an SL? I mean, like an SLS is just. Spectacle. I it's could see getting an SLS black over yeah. a GT, but other than that. Oh, no, the Even SLS then, is... I don't know. The SLS is so cool. It's the spectacle. It's that engine, the sound. Yeah. I'm not Gull saying... Wing. I'm not saying the AMG... What? Gull wings. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm not saying the AMG... I, I always made fun of the SLS when it was new because I... It really seemed like they came up with the doors before First, the car. Yeah. They definitely... Of course. Yes. But um, I like... I like... The, and I've said this before, and you both heard me but i like yeah the slr the mclaren mercedes slr you love it it's a it looks like it's a great. penis mm-hmm. like, i'm saying mercedes mclaren slr cost half a million dollars yeah and then the sls came out and it was like half the price and had the same performance yeah. and then the amg gt G, amg gg gt <laughs> came out yeah they should have called it gt amg do not at me that is uh, a fact kevin has opinions about Mercedes naming conventions. No, it's just this one. It was the SLS AMG. They should call this the GT AMG. I agree. It's much less awkward than AMG GT. Well, AMG yeah. is now officially the manufacturer. That's what yeah, they said true. about the SLS. Well, that's what they said about the SLS. That's exactly the line they fed us about the SLS. But anyway, the AMG GT came out and it had the same performance as the SLS and at roughly half the price. Yeah, and I think that's extremely cool. Like no one is doing actually going. Down market and and bring like democratizing like performance. Years, we're going to get an SLR performance. performance Mercedes for forty dollars at this rate. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. well, it's just going to be in badge only. Yeah, MG Sport line it will be. Yeah, whatever. it'll be the sweetest CLA. <laughs> yep. I, oh. The new CLA looks good. I, I that's the A class. That's not the, the CLA. <laughs> they will both coexist. <laughs> 
<laughs> get but. in. I. So, have you guys ever used Car to Go? Then this can we could wrap up whatever. But like, uh, what are you trying to say? No, I'm just saying I, we've been doing this for a very long time. Yeah, how do you know? This is the longest podcast that we've had thus far. Uh, but should we end this? We're not going to get to. We'll leave the uh, accessories that we have here for can the I next one. Can I tease it? I Kevin do want to know what this is Kevin before is we go. So excited Open about it this. Up. He is. It's a. There are two people cover. who would be excited about this: Tim and Blake. And yeah. here we go. So, um, Patrick is opening up uh, opening. this brochure, which is a hardback, very nice brochure. It costs a lot of money to make. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just discovered what it is. So, Patrick, will you Typo- describe? The typography, will you describe? Uh, the first of all, what is the name of the car, and then what are you actually looking at? It's the Lexus font on the cover. I feel hot. I feel hot, and I feel conf- my. This triggered my fight or f- my fight or flight response. Excellent. Uh, it's the Soarer F four thirty S Toyota Soarer. Yeah. It's a Lexus four thirty. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's a great car. Look at the type. Look at the little italicized words. Oh shit. There's one where it says metal roof. Coop, I think. Yeah, this is... It's amazing. It's pretty good. This is open air, well, open air cruising. Okay. This is... Uh, <laughs> I, this is so much. It is. That's why we're going to save it for another one. I think we're going to yeah. wrap up here. But um, to our guest, Patrick, thank you for being yeah, on. Yeah, thanks for being Leading on. Leading a good discussion. You should be on more because we, I know. we actually had stuff to talk about. We didn't just bicker about... Yeah, certain Scandinavian vehicles. I, I was oh, really I'll worried. I'll let you fill in the oh, gap. Oh my god! Yeah, I was really worried I was going to have to play marriage counselor here. No. Mm. Uh, oh. Anyways, um, yeah. Thanks for being on. No, and, thank you guys uh, for having me. Yeah, hope to have you on again soon. Anytime, just give me some notice because it is a we will do no two and a half thing. hour drive. We'll do no okay. such that thing. should be yeah. Should be a time. two and a half we hour drive. We don't have phone technology. No. So. No. No, no, this no, no, is, no. This is it. All right. Well, thanks for listening. Yeah. This was new for... Oh, God, you didn't do your the outro. I, I wanted to see where you were going with that. Uh, right. Please check out our Instagram, new for 96 or send us an email. We'd love to receive the first one at we new for 96 spelled out, at gmail.com. All right, excellent. Yeah. I love Gamal Nanjiani's movies. Oh, <laughs> oh, no, this is terrible. Podcast over. Yep. Thanks for listening. Bye. 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 How many hours was that? Three?